So a couple of weeks ago I did a poll asking you guys uh, what videos you want to see next. One of those was to do uh, 12 kilometers on a new river testing for gold. That was the highest percentage you guys voted for. So here we are, we're going to make it happen. I love searching new areas because you just never know what you're going to find. And uh, places that are as remote as this, uh, not too many people get up in these areas. I'd like to have a look at this river before I drop my heart and soul into it. I'm going to send up the drone and uh, we'll check it out. The drone's good because I can usually uh, get an idea of the landscape, the vegetation, whether I'm going to be able to find somewhere to camp along the banks of the river. I've got the topography that I need on my maps, but uh, it is handy to just to get a bit of an idea of what you're in for. So there it is, we've got the river. There should be plenty of camp spots down there. That's nice and open. Uh, pretty, the topography's fairly flat. Looking good. It's very hard to tell if there's any bedrock on the drone. But it's a nice big river, nice and wide. Right, I'm ready for this. I think it's going to be alright. Just flying it back in. 880 metres out. So I bought myself a massive uh, pack. I can uh, throw all my uh, pack craft and everything inside. Uh, still get my wetsuit strapped to the outside. A lot of you are thinking, why the hell would I do it? Well, as a prospector, you just end up with tons of gear. And uh, this is, I love everything in the bag. Uh, it was only a cheapie off eBay, so I'll let you know how it goes after a few trips. If it holds up after this one, it'll probably be doing a reasonable job. Massive. I've got a forestry track for the walk in, so there's no bush bashing to get to it or anything like that. Uh, the real work will start when we get to the river, start making our way up. I'll be able to inflate the pack raft when we get down there and throw all the gear in instead of having it on my back loaded her up this trip, ready for a big scene. Landslide. the river and get it close. Wow, she's a big one. Well, we're straight on the bedrock, so that's good. Bedrock down there. I'm excited. So some of you will notice that this is a new raft I've got myself. Um, I finally retired the NRS. Uh, she had about 
20 holes so she had more than 10 lives and it was uh yeah time to get something decent it's an alpaca uh the alpaca ranger so it's a bigger raft uh, designed for hunting uh, people throw their deers and their dogs in there and uh you can get a lot of gear in them so i went all out and got myself something decent Oh no, we're away. Let's get to work. So the plan for the trip is uh, to spend three to four days on this river, maybe five if things go really well. I've got enough food to do that. Um, I don't know how far I'll travel up. I've mapped out about 16 kilometers in total, but I'm gonna be dragging this upstream. And uh, the reason I'm doing that is because the water's really low at the moment. It's been so dry this summer, there hasn't been a lot of rain. So it gives me an opportunity to pull the raft up all of these rapids. And, um, I'm hoping the river's wide enough and got enough uh, flow to get it through without too many log jams and all that sort of thing. I'll be testing out ground as I go along and uh, if I find something uh, we'll pull up if it's significant. If it's not much to it we'll keep moving until we find some good, uh, good gold deposits. There's also a chance for uh, Osmeridium in this river. Um, it has been found in this river so that could be kind of cool to find that. The Osmeridium uh, appears really shiny and silver underwater. I'm going to have to keep an eye out on the map and uh, just look at the topography and keep an eye out for somewhere that I can set up camp each night. Uh, there's a forecast for about 5 to 10 mils tonight, later tonight. I'm hoping it's not too severe and that we don't get flooded out. Uh, they've forecast rain a lot lately and it just hasn't really come to much, so I think we'll be pretty right. You don't want to get stuck in a steep gorge like this uh, when the rains come. Right, I've just pulled up here. I noticed there was some uh, nice looking bedrock. It's pretty hard. Um, but yeah, there might be some crevices up in there that I can work. So we'll jump in and have a quick look. After a half hour of testing this location, I hadn't even found a trace of gold. Uh, Alright, we shall keep moving on. I'll be looking for bedrock that's uh, ageing. Nine times out of ten, the best gold I've found has always been on bedrock that's decomposed, as I've mentioned before. This uh, country's real steep, I haven't seen anywhere to camp yet. going to be a lot harder pulling this raft than what I originally thought. Just have to take it very steady. Come on. I'm holding a camera with my mouth. Yeah, chest mount. Uh, well, this stuff's really hard looking. Uh, it's pretty jaggedy, so I might give it a bit of a go. I've moved probably 600 meters upstream. Mm. Hopefully there's something in here. Ooh. 
Okay, so nothing again, unfortunately. Spent a good amount of time here because there was a few little quartz veins and stringers running through the bedrock and usually I find the gold in them but uh, just didn't show up this time so we'll head on up. Alright, I noticed the river's widening out here. It's usually what I look for because the widening of the river creates a low pressure zone for the gold on the edges. Especially on these edges it seems to collect. Some of that bedrock looks alright, but I really haven't moved that far from where I was, so I would have expected to have seen gold back there. Come a fair way and I haven't seen anywhere to camp. I may end up high on one of these gravel bars for the night. Which is a bit scary when you're supposed to get rain. <laughs> Okay, well, I've spent a half an hour in this, uh, it's a big uh, sweeping corner on the inside and there's bedrock just fringing it into the uh, gravels there and I've done probably 20 or 30 minutes, so I've tested out quartz veins and stringers, the bedrock's like nice and soft and just right, a few little spots there and there I tried and haven't come up with anything, so, yeah. I guess that's the way it goes sometimes. I won't uh, quit yet, only day one, so we'll keep going. Hopefully we find something. I've just uh, spotted my first potential camp spot up on the terrace up there, so I'll mark that on the map, and uh, it might be somewhere we have to come back to a bit later on. Okay, a bit of excitement. Uh, just been working some bedrock just down under this little rapid and I've come across our first piece of gold. I'll jump in and show you. Yeah, not a bit, only small. All right, so we've got a few pieces. Uh, I think there was about three or four flakes, very, very small, but uh, that's exciting. It means we've got gold. And the thing about uh, this river and this area is that it's uh, load gold. So it's not glacial like some of the other rivers you see me work in. So there's potential for us to follow it upstream um, and try and work out where, like a rough area where it might be shedding from. Uh, once we see good, good amounts of it and a bit of thickness, uh, that's when the game changes. It's good to have a bit of gold in the snuffer. I'll mark this spot on the GPS as well. It might be something we can come back to and spend more time later on. Done. Fine flakes. That'll, that's what it's going to be. It's about 4.30 now. And, uh, daylight savings is finished here in Tassie and I we'll, uh, won't have too much longer today. starting to get dark on me now so I'm gonna start looking for camp looks like there might be a bit of flat ground up there possibly 
All right, I'll pull the raft in here. Have a look up in here. There might be some ground for the camp. Wow, that will do. It's a bit lumpy, but I reckon we can make it work. Just looking at the uh, quartz here, we've got a bit of a geology shift as well. This is all looking a bit different to what's been downstream a bit. Okay, so I got my wetsuit off and some dry clothes. It feels amazing. I'm just going to cook up some dinner. I uh, went for a little snipe, but uh, there wasn't much bedrock anywhere near where I'm at, so it didn't work out that well. But uh, that's okay though, because tomorrow's a new day. Get a message sent home and let the family know I'm okay. of you's comment and uh, ask me if I get lonely out on these trips well yeah I do I miss my family and my kids when I'm out here but uh, it's usually the first night is always the hardest I find for whatever reason kind of doesn't make sense but uh, yeah once I've done a few days I kind of get set in my ways and yeah but uh, what I do do for a bit of entertainment in the tent download movies on my phone I'm uh, going through the Outlander seasons at the moment and uh, keeps me going. Sometimes I bring a book and read a book but, uh, at the moment watching movies and yeah, kind of keeps me going. Sounds like the rain set in and it's been uh, in that way for about an hour now. It's going to be a wet trip, I think. Temperatures dropped. Ugh, she's cold. Right now, it's the naked dash to the wetsuit. Wish me luck. The things you do. Ah. Yeah. I 
we'll wake you up in the morning. Okay, after 13 hours of darkness, we can finally get back to work. I've loaded her up. Uh, we'll start making our way upstream. Hopefully some adventure is awaiting. The geology here just doesn't look right, so I'm just uh, pushing on up. I've been testing little spots here and there, but I haven't had any luck at all, so I'm just covering ground right now. Oh, it's been a hard slog. Probably come a couple of kilometres. It's going to be so much better going back down. gonna be fun. Not sure whether I'll pull it up or might be better unload it. As I continued upstream I began to see many more portages that I had to cross. Been another slow day so far. Lots of ground covered, lots of testing, and no gold. Hasn't been uh, what I'd call good workable ground. I kind of know what I'm looking for from experience on the other rivers around Tassie. There's always these drop off points, uh, decomposed bedrock where the river widens. You know, there hasn't been a lot of that. It's been very hard geology and uh, everything's just been blown through these gorges that I'm walking through at the moment. Oh my goodness, I just saw the biggest trout I've ever seen in my life. Where'd he go? Well, the biggest one I've seen in these rivers. I'm gonna have to go for a swim and look for him. Too good to miss. Closer, he saw me before I saw him. Well, it's not gold, it's uh, that's boosted my spirits a bit. That was so awesome! Massive big trout. I used to do a bit of trout fishing when I was younger. You guys always ask me if I see any trout, and I do see a lot of little ones. That's the first time I've seen one that big. As I continued on, the portages continued as well and the river become increasingly difficult to keep moving up.
the river's widened up for me and uh, I've just pulled up in this location here you can see nice flat bedrock and it's very coarse with nice little cracks and crevices but the bedrock runs right across the river looks like there'll be some nice pockets to work so this is our best shot at it got a couple of flakes but they are micro micro pieces I found a couple of pieces of iron iridium. I'll grab the other camera for you. Okay, that's good. We are starting to see a bit of colour. Uh, the gold and the silver. I've got a bit of osmeridium there. Um, so I've been working, I mean, you can see all the light patches, I've been working along this bench of uh, decomposed bedrock. It's only very, very small, so uh, I'm going to keep moving up. White fuzzy clouds, which means uh, it's probably snowing up on the highlands. Notice the water temperature's dropped a lot just overnight. Again, this is going to be fun. some branches so I can hopefully swim through oh, things you do for some fly specks of gold and she pop It's 4.30 so I'm going to have to start looking for a camp and uh, call it call it a day. Alright, looks like we might have somewhere to camp up there. Possibly there's a bit of flat ground. Huge big myrtle tree tucked up in behind. Up here. Fingers crossed. I don't want to have to go too much further. It's starting to get late. There's that big myrtle tree. He's a ripper. Might be able to get the tent under this fern. That should do it. Perfect bit of ground. Absolute paradise up in here. I'm feeling pretty defeated on this trip. It's raining again. Yeah. I don't 
done about nine kilometers so I've only got three left for tomorrow and then I'll have done the 12k's that I set out to do and yeah I just don't know whether it's going to show anything most of the other rivers I've been to the geology is always changing but this river just seems to be kind of the same right through which has not given up any nice shiny raining again and heavy too Go move the raft. I didn't put it on high enough ground. It's been raining for hours. It's been raining most of the night. It's just calmed a little bit, so there's my opportunity. If I don't move it, I could lose the raft, and that would be tragic. Oh, it's so wet. Can't believe how much rain there is. The forecast wasn't that heavy. <laughs> Get quick. Getting wet. Should do it. Don't have to touch too many birds. End up searched. with added showers. Always the rinse the suit off uh, after every day so that I don't get any rashes or anything like that. You want to keep it clean when you're out here for multiple days. But it does make it a bit uncomfortable. I'm in. So we've punched through the first eight kilometers really fast. Not a lot of gold. If we had found something decent along the way, we would have uh, slowed down a bit. But uh, we've got about four k's left. That'll be the final leg for today. Uh, it's what I had set out for this uh, trip. If we don't find anything awesome, then uh, I get to do the fun part, which is uh, paddle back downstream, 12 k's back to the car. So. That'll be a lot quicker and easier. I'm hoping that uh, I can do the 4Ks up and the uh, 12Ks back down in a single day. It's going to be a big day, but uh, I don't want to stay the extra night if I don't have to and if we're not on gold. If we do find good gold, we will certainly stay upstream and spend the extra night.
getting frustrated. It's all too hard, the geology's rock hard around here. I don't ever really have much luck in this hard, hard bedrock. This really, it's hard, smooth and shiny. It's got to be decomposed. It's like decomposed bedrock is the ultimate gold trap. here in small doses, but it's not here in large quantities. How far do I go on this wet, miserable day? It's so cold today, there's, there's forecast for snow on the highland. <coughs> All right, so that was a little bit exciting. Got a few bits of gold there, that's probably the most uh, payable spot I've found so far. The reason I chose this spot is because the uh, river widens out and you can see all these logs and things that are collected on the edge of the bedrock. And down the back here, you've got all this decomposed bedrock here. And there's some nice trenches, I was working up in there behind this ledge. And uh, we've got a few little bits, so it's something but it's uh, not as payable as I'd like it to be. Now because we're just testing, this will be something that I'll mark on the GPS and uh, I could potentially come back here. Although it is a long, long way for just the uh, few bits that I got, but uh, with some more time, you never know what could show up. We'll keep moving up, we'll keep testing. If it gets a bit thicker or there's more of it, uh, we might spend some time. But otherwise, that'll be it for this trip and uh, we'll have to go back to the drawing board. Okay, well, I am uh, at the 12k mark. I've tested everything on this river. I have given it my absolute best go. Unfortunately, I haven't found anything else. I've been testing, testing, testing. Uh, we just had that one spot, which I'll uh, mark off for next time. And I think I'd have to be pretty desperate to come back up here, actually. It's been an absolutely massive mission. But anyway, uh, we got some gold. I've got the fun part now of uh, heading back via all these rapids and start heading downstream. Back in the warmth of my home, let's have a look at this gold and osmeridium and uh, we'll conclude this video. Okay, here it is. Uh, this was definitely one of the uh, tougher prospecting trips I've had. Three full days, uh, big days too. 
yeah, struggled to find much at all, but uh, there is a bit of color there. Uh, there was that one chunky little bit there on the right, and uh, you can see a few little bits of osmeridium scattered about. There's also a couple of little pieces of black sand, but those silvery pieces are Tasmanian osmeridium. Osmeridium was used back in the day for the fountain tip pens and uh, the price of gold dropped for a while back in the old days and the uh, Osmeridium was uh, much, much more valuable to the prospectors. The Osmeridium was used in the ends of these fountain pens and uh, there was a high demand at the time for these. Uh, it was before the uh, ballpoint pens came out. Tassie was one of the only places in the world that you could find it, so uh, prospectors went crazy looking for it. But I am going to go back to this river. There's another uh, place I can access it from the top and I'd like to test the uh, top of the river as well. Yeah. well. This gold's ultra fine, but we'll see if we can get it to do something with the scales. Okay, that's not too bad, 0.47. So half a gram of gold with a little bit of Aussie. I'm out testing, this was a new river and uh, this is the way it goes in prospecting. You don't always hit the mother load. I know you guys have seen some very big cleanups from me. I've had some extremely good uh, trips over the past summer. This is more like the reality of prospecting. There's a lot of hit and miss in between. I hope you have enjoyed today's video. Leave a like and a comment, that helps me out and uh, we'll see you next time.